Okay, g'day all, and welcome to another toot. So, uh, we've actually just about finished all of the things that I wanted to go through in basic C++. Uh, we got this toot, and maybe another one on inheritance, and maybe one more on sort of random things like uh, static variables and that kind of thing. Uh, but we've just about finished basic C++, so after this, uh, the toot will be finished, the toot series will be finished, and we'll move on to something else, like maybe a DirectX series or a Windows programming series. Uh, using C++. It's going to be good. Anyway, today we're still in the uh, console, so just bear with me. Um, constructors and destructors we're talking about. Uh, these are really, really interesting, and uh, you really can't get very far without them. So, they're pretty much just special methods which uh, are used in a class to create or destroy instances of the class. Uh, constructors are methods which are used to create or initialize objects from a class. Uh, initialize is probably the better way to, yeah, better way to talk about it. They don't actually create the object. Uh, anyway, that's sort of, you know, neither here nor there. But they're called when instances of a class are created, and they have no return value. Or a lot of people like to say that they actually return the object that they're creating. Yeah, that's kind of what happens behind the scenes, under the hood. Um, they always return the object that they create, so you don't actually specify a return value, as we'll see. Anyway, they always have exactly the same name as the class, and they take, they can take parameters. Yeah, unlike destructors, which take no parameters. Uh, destructors are methods which are used to destroy objects built from a class, or more usually, they're used to deallocate resources that the class has uh, allocated during its lifetime. Uh, these are called just before instances of a class are deleted, or when they fall out of scope. Yeah, so that becomes really important, really, when they fall out of scope or when they're deleted, using the delete operator. Uh, they also have no return value. Uh, they really have no return value, like the um, constructor sort of secretly returns the object that's being built, but the destructor doesn't return anything. Um, anyway, we're not talking about secretly returning. <laughs> uh, they take no parameters. Yeah, unlike a constructor, which can take parameters. Their name begins with a tilde, but otherwise it's exactly the same as the class. What are you talking about? Um, the default constructor. Let's move on to a bit of a bit of a practical example. Probably the most basic constructor of all is a thing called the default constructor. And this is a constructor that takes no parameters. So right here I've got a class called bird. And it's just it's it's an excellent class in many ways. It's got a, a default constructor specified, and we know that it's a default constructor because uh, it's got exactly the same name as the class, no tilde at the start, uh, and it takes no parameters. That's the default constructor. And I've actually specified the body down here, and it does absolutely nothing. Uh, which, incidentally, is exactly the default constructor that C++ writes for you, automagically. Uh, if you don't specify any constructors yourself for a class, C++ will kindly write one for you. It'll write exactly this one, the default constructor that does nothing. Uh, the moment that you specify another constructor, whether it be the default constructor or another constructor that takes parameters, um, C++ won't write a default constructor for you. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, other constructors. Like I said before, um, constructors can actually take parameters, and they can be overloaded, like any other function. So we could specify two constructors for our bird class, one that takes an integer and one that takes a float. Yeah, simple as that. Then you just specify the bodies of the constructors as uh, separate methods down there like that. Um, I hope you can see the mouse cursor. I'm pointing with the mouse cursor. I mean, if you can't see the mouse cursor, then this is not going to make much sense, but hopefully it's all good. I don't know. You'll figure it out. Anyway, constructors can be overloaded and take parameters. Um, which brings about the point, how do we call a constructor? Um, they're called automatically a lot of the time. Uh, when we create an object from a class, the first thing that happens is the constructor is called. Yeah, you know, really all it's about is it's about saving a little bit of programming time, and instead of creating an object, then calling some initialize method. Um, the constructor is that initialize method, and it's called automatically. That's really all we're doing. We're just um, specifying methods that are called automatically to initialize an object. Uh, this would be how you call the default constructor. Yeah, granted that our bird class has a default constructor. If you type something like bird and then b, because there's nothing in the brackets afterwards, there's not even, you know, I didn't even put any brackets there. Um, that's going to look for a default constructor and uh, call it to initialize this bird object. 
Uh, if there's no default constructor, then um, you know C++ is going to get angry and tell us that there's no there's no default constructor, uh, unless there's no constructor specified at all, and then C++ will have written a default constructor for us. That'd be special. Uh, anyway, if you like, you can also call uh, a constructor that takes parameters. Uh, I want to say too, at the end of this shoot, we're going to do some um, some problems or some challenges. Yeah. So a few folks wrote in and said that they were a good idea, and uh, I agree. So we've got a few of those at the end. Anyway, uh, if you want to call a constructor that takes an int, for example, an integer, you might do something like this: bird b, and then you put the uh, parameters or parameter in brackets, so 100. Sort of just like a method call, really. Yeah, this is going to look for a constructor taking an int. Alrighty, constructors and the new operator. Uh, it's really common to use the new operator to call constructors and allocate objects on the heap. It is really common. It's really common to use the heap quite a lot, actually. Um, remember that the new operator requires a pointer. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Um, birds star birds means uh, there's a pointer called birds, and it equals new bird 100 in square brackets. So what's that going to do? That is actually going to allocate space on the heap for 100 birds, and once it's done that, it's going to call the constructor for every individual bird. Every one of those 100 is going to have its own default constructor called. Very, very cool. Um, remember to use the delete square bracket uh, operator or delete to return these birds to the heap when you're done. Yeah, you've got to deallocate your RAM, otherwise you... I don't know. Get in trouble. Um, delete square brackets birds because it's a uh, it's an array. If that was just a single bird that I'd allocated there on the heap, then it would just be delete by itself. Anyway, that's how you use a new operator. And um, whenever you use the new operator, you're in control of deallocating the array, uh, and you know when the function ends, this array is not going to fall out of scope by itself. So you have to call delete yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hope so. Anyway, destructors onto destructors. So destructors don't take any parameters. Uh, they're called when we use delete or delete square brackets, or the other time that they're called is uh, automatically when objects fall out of scope. Uh, scope is the lifetime of, of an object. So when an object dies because, you know, maybe the function that it was created in has finished, uh, the object is said to have fallen out of scope, and it'll have its uh, destructor called automatically. Uh, destructor names start with a tilde, just like that. Yeah, it's pretty. It's basically the same sort of thing as a as a constructor, except you've got this tilde at the start. Uh, so inside here, inside the body of the destructor, you deallocate anything that the object had previously allocated, and that's really the point of the destructor. I mean, if you've if you've not allocated anything uh, in the uh, lifetime of the object, there's really no point in having a destructor. Anyway, uh, here's a bit of an example before we get on to some uh, challenges. I've got a store class over here, and um, it's got a pointer, a bunch of integers called items. And it's got a constructor and a destructor. Um, in my in my constructor or constructor, I should say constructor, constructor, constructor. Yeah, I don't know. I tend to emphasize the con whenever I'm talking about constructors and destructors together. Why is that relevant? Uh, items equals new int 100. Uh, so in the constructor of my class, I've allocated uh, 100 integers. And I've used the new operator, so that's going to be on the heap. Uh, in my destructor, I've been a really good lad, and I've decided that it's probably best to return those items back to the heap. So uh, I use the delete square brackets and uh, items to return them back to the heap. And now, what's interesting is how you use those, and uh, a little bit about scope as well. So in my main method is the first example, something like this line just here, store star stores equals new store 100. What's that going to do? Ah, uh, well, it's pretty easy. That's going to create 100 stores on the heap because I've used the new operator, and for every single one of those 100 stores, they're each going to run their own constructor, and in the constructor, they're each going to allocate a little array of 100 integers. So that single line just there, 100 times 100, 
times 4 bytes for each int makes about 40,000 bytes worth of data on the heap in a single line. That's how much I'm allocating. Uh, which means also that I probably better be careful and uh, delete all that data and give it back to the heap. So that's what I've done down here. Delete, open, close, square brackets, stores. And this line just here, delete, open, close, square brackets, and stores is going to call the destructor for every single one of those stores. And inside the destructor, each of those stores is going to deallocate the uh, little array that it allocated. It's pretty good, really. It keeps, keeps track of you know, a lot of data uh, really, really easily. Anyway, I had to call delete in this first example here because stores was a heap array and it's not going to fall out of scope by itself. Uh, I mean, down here, when the main method ends, it will actually, you know, it will be deallocated when the program shuts down, but that's not really what we're talking about. Um, yeah, good. I'm, I'll just try not, try not go off on a tangent, so we'll just go on to the second example. Um, some function. This is a little bit different. This store down here isn't a heap object. This is on the stack. This is a local variable. Uh, it's local to some function, which means that its lifetime is the same as this function just here. Uh, it's not got a pointer, and I haven't used the new operator. It's just a local variable. Uh, so what's going to happen down here is uh, as soon as this function, some function, as soon as this function ends, um, store is full. It's is said to have fallen out of scope. It dies in a way. It's sad, but that's what happens. Anyway, when a local variable falls out of scope, um, the destructor is called automatically. So uh, when I create this variable, first of all, it's going to jump over here to the constructor, and it's going to create 100 integers on the heap for this local variable. But then, as soon as the function ends, it falls out of scope, it's going to automatically call the destructor and delete all of those items. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, on to some challenges. Here we go. So these are a little contrived, but hopefully they're helpful to um, using constructors and destructors. I want you to, uh, first of all, make a person class. Uh, I want you to make a person class, give each person an int for age, a float for height, and a float for weight. Um, set the values for age height and weight in a constructor to whatever you want. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter what you set them to, but set them to something. Uh, I'm going to use rand to generate random values. Good. Um, alrighty, so a person class. So this is how I would do it. Give it a shot yourself, but this is how I would do it. I would say class person. I'm just going to make everything public. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. Int age all, settle down. Mm. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah, so if you wanted, you could make it that your constructor takes these values, age, height, and weight, and you could kind of set them from that, but I'm just going to make a separate constructor that generates random values. That's got to be a capital P, bro. Um, age equals rand, and I might make my people between, I don't know, 25 and 100, maybe so, between, we'll say, we'll say about 76, um, plus 25. Okay, so that should make my people between 25 and 100. I might make their weight equals rand, I might just, you know, buy 100, or buy 50 plus 50. What do you type random for? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> okay, it must be some, I don't know, some other language maybe. Some other language uses random. I might make my height exactly the same. There we go. That's how I would answer that first question. Yeah, that's just one answer. There's, you know, lots of them are possible, but that's how I would do it. Alrighty, on to challenge number two. And, ah, oh, th these just keep getting harder and harder. Uh, a house class. I want you to make a house class. So make a house class with a random number from one to five people in it. Use the new operator to make arrays of differing sizes. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but you're not allowed to do something like this. Int i. So you can do that. That's fine. Um, 
Or you could even do like that. That's that's fine as well. Um, the number that you put in these square brackets, if you're making a regular array that's not on the heap, the number you put in there has to be a constant. So you couldn't say int j equals 5 and then use j. Because j is not a constant. It's a variable. And you could do that if you want. Const int. Uh, const means that it's a constant. That means that you can't change it. So if, if j is a constant, then you can't do something like this. Hmm. Um, anyway, if you want to make variable array sizes, you've got to allocate them on the heap. So we could do... Um, we could do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hope so. Anyway, I want you to make a house object with from 1 to 5... Sorry, what was the question again? Challenge 2, house class. Make a house class with a random number from 1 to 5 people in it. Alrighty, give it a shot. This is how I do it. We'll make everything public again for no particular reason. House. Okay, we got person, star, people. Something like that. Okay. Um, people equals new rand five. Okay, so we're allocating. What's the problem? We're allocating on the. What is the problem? Let me just stop for a start. <laughs> it helps if you put the type that you're making in there. Yeah, just equals new rand five. Um, anyway, that is uh, how I would, or almost how I would make the house class. But I've forgotten something. Yeah, I've forgotten something. So what have I forgotten? Um, I've allocated RAM for my house on the heap using the new operator. So I'd better return it to the heap when I'm done, and I'll do that with a destructor. Just like that. That way, whenever I make a house class, it's going to allocate people, but it's also going to deallocate them when the uh, house class falls out of scope. Good stuff. So that's how I would do puzzle number two. And puzzle number three, oh, it's the hardest of the lot. It's the hardest. Um, town class. I want you to make a town class with 1,000 houses from the previous slide, allocated on the heap with the new operator. That's unbelievable. It's impossible, it's impossible isn't it? No, it's not impossible, but give it a shot. And this is how I would do it. Alrighty, so we want to stay if I type in class. Okay, houses. Um, let me make also town. And I'm going to inline this as well. I don't know if we've spoken about this, but if you've got a small function, sometimes it's a good idea for performance uh, to inline it, which means specify the body of the function straight underneath it, uh, inside the class itself, instead of as a separate body outside the class. Hmm. I don't know if we talked about it, but it's, anyway. Um, houses equals new. Just like that. I might inline this one as well. Get out of here. Just like that. Um, okay, well, if I just put a breakpoint there and hit run and see if we've actually got some errors. Yes, we do. So, function house void. What's the problem? Oh. Sorry, yeah, that was supposed to be a, a destructor there. Okay, the, the rest seems pretty fine except for it's whinging about me. setting these floating point values to integers, but I mean, I don't care. That's all good. Um, okay, so now the question is, what happens when I do this? There we go. What's that going to do? What's that, what, what is that going to do? Well, 
Um, let's trace it, shall we? Um, at this line, I've specified nothing in the brackets afterwards, like there's no, you know, no parameter, so it's going to look for the default constructor of the town class, which is right here. Uh, inside the default constructor of the town class, uh, it's going to say house equals new house 1000. It's going to create 1000 houses on the heap. And every single one of those 1000 houses is going to call its own constructor, which brings it up to here, uh, where each of them is going to create a little array of people might be, you know, one person, it might be five people, it might be zero people actually, weirdly enough. I think I might actually put plus one there. Yeah, it'd be, I might make this four actually. I might make it five. So what do we got? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, anyway, there's going to be between one and five people created from the heap in the house class, and each one of those people is going to call its own constructor, which will bring it up to here, and the people are going to choose their own age, weight, and height. Um, so this little innocuous line just here is going to call, you know, thousands of methods, thousands of them. It's going to allocate a lot of RAM as well. Um, we don't actually know how many people are going to be created since the number of people in each house is random. Uh, I'm sure you can see that you can make some pretty cool sort of role-playing NPC generation tricks doing exactly this. Um, anyway, this t just here is a local variable to the main method. So when the main method falls out of scope, or sorry, when the main method ends on the very next line, this returns zero, um, t falls out of scope or dies, and it calls its own destructor. So it'll come up to here, it'll delete the houses, and each of the houses will call its own delete people, and the people don't have a destructor, so the RAM holding the people will just be deallocated from the heap. Um, yeah, so basically it's just a chain reaction, and I end up um, allocating, you know, thousands of people on the heap, and then when the town class falls out of scope, uh, I deallocate them all. Anyway, I hope that made sense, and I hope that was useful. That's uh, constructors and destructors. And I really chose not to show the same old boring example of constructors and destructors, because I think that it's not realistic to print things out inside constructors and destructors like many chutes would have you believe. <laughs> uh, anyway, have fun, folks. See ya.